Hi, Professor Rex here. In this week's video, I'm going to focus on the simple tech stock portfolio my accounting students and I started in April of last year, as outlined in red. It's a real-world investment portfolio where I make additional investments on the first trading day of each week. And so far, the portfolio has an annualized return of 36.68%. And later in the video, I'll talk about some new investment research that sheds some light on an investment strategy that has significantly outperformed the market and is somewhat related to tech stock investing. In next week's video, we'll talk in depth about our dividend stock portfolios that my accounting students and I started back in 2022 and 2023 as outlined in yellow. Like our tech stock portfolio, they are real world investment portfolios where I make additional investments on the first trading day of each week. So in effect, they are accumulation portfolios, mimicking someone in their working years who is consistently adding to their investment portfolios. As a reminder, the portfolios on the right side of the screen in the light blue outline are portfolios that I started back in 2003 when I was in college. These portfolios are more buy and hold portfolios with infrequent trading, so their lack of action might make for boring videos. So you can go online to my website, beatthestockmarket.com, to read more about them if you'd like less frequent trading. Before we talk about the 10 tech stocks we bought last Monday, let's see how the portfolio has performed so far and its best performers. The portfolio was started on April 29th, 2024, and each week we add funds to the portfolio and invest in 10 different tech stocks. The rankings of the tech stocks changes weekly. Currently, the portfolio consists of 25 tech stocks. The average investment so far has been held for 135.6 days and has produced an annualized total return of 36.68% using Excel's rate function. If we'd instead invested our weekly investment into the most actively traded diversified technology ETF, which is ticker symbol XLK, the annualized total return would only be 18.64%. Investments made on the same days in the S&P 500 would have had a return of 22.48%. So the best performing stocks in the portfolio so far, based on their initial investments, which for most were April of last year, are Shopify, which has doubled, more than doubled, NVIDIA, up 57.8%, CrowdStrike, 48.1%, Broadcom, up 45.4%, Apple, 41.1%, and ServiceNow at 37%. Here's the usual, here is the usual disclaimer. This presentation is for informational purposes only and is not a recommendation to buy or sell securities or engage in any investment activity. It's all well and fine to get investment ideas from others, but you always need to do your own research. Now let's talk about the tech stocks we bought at the beginning of last week. On this slide are ratings for the top 15 tech stocks as of last Monday. I posted these rankings to our website, beatthestockmarket.com, last Monday. Then we purchased the top 10 stocks. Now this list was created after the DeepSeek AI breakthrough, and as a result, NVIDIA makes our list again, this time at number 7, after the stock pulled back on the DeepSeek news that we, did, uh, that we discussed two videos ago. Note that all of these stocks are higher quality, meaning they must have a quality ranking of B minus or better, and more on what makes up our quality grading, quality grade on the next slide. Also note that the ranking system used for these tech stocks may differ from the rankings we use to rate dividend growth stocks, because some tech stocks do not pay dividends. Therefore, in this ranking, we ignore the criteria that involves dividend growth, dividend payout ratio, etc. Our highest rated tech stocks last week were Adobe, Intuit, Nice, Microsoft, Taiwan Semi, Analog Devices, NVIDIA, Applied Materials, and NXP Semiconductors. On this slide, I want to show the components to our quality grade. Quality wise, we only invest in stocks rated B minus or better for this portfolio. Risk is the first quality component. Tech stocks, by their very nature, tend to be riskier than most other sectors. The next quality component is competitive advantage. Obviously, the more competitive advantages a company has, the better investment candidate they are. The next quality component attempts to evaluate the company's management. Our evaluation includes both management's use of capital and general decision making, but also our research dives deep into accounting data to look for red flags in the company's accounting practices, as well as the quality or reliability of the reported earnings. And remember, if you're new to investing, earnings is just a fancy word for profits. And finally, the last quality component is financial health. Remember that the risk rating is, is comparing these stocks to other stocks, not to other investments like bonds or CDs. 
This slide shows our best performing stocks in our tech stock portfolio since our last tech stock portfolio video, which was two weeks ago. The best performers were NVIDIA, CrowdStrike, Analog Devices, Shopify, and NXP Semiconductors. NVIDIA bounced back quite nicely with a 15.64% gain after DeepSeek made it pull back significantly. Now, one reason why tech stocks have been outperforming the market might be because they tend to require little capital. As a simplified example, if you want to start a software company or like a software consulting company, you just need a computer and software knowledge. On the other hand, if you want to start manufacturing cars or jets, you're going to need a lot of buildings, equipment, employees, etc. In other words, a lot of capital, which is very expensive to both obtain and maintain. Now, Goldman Sachs recently published a research note that shows that companies that do not require a lot of capital have significantly outperformed companies that employ heavy capital during the period of 1990 to 2024. And it's not even close. The research calculated capital intensity based on three formulas. Assets divided by number of employees. Assets divided by net income. And capital expenditures divided by net income. We find this research to be super intriguing and we have done some digging to see which companies currently require little capital. Little capital. I was able to modify our research spreadsheet to calculate the three formulas that this strategy is based on. So we now have the capability to determine which companies are capital light and which are capital intensive, which you'll see on the next slide. So here is the list I came up uh, of the S&P 500 companies that are the least capital intensive. So this column shows how capital intensive they are. A 0% ranking means they're in the top zero. So like Rollins is in the top 0.3% of companies for requiring the least amount of capital. So a company that re would require the most capital would have a 100% ranking here. Once again, the formulas for the Goldman Sachs study used were assets divided by number of employees, assets divided by net income, and capital expenditures divided by net income. And since the study covered a 34-year period when growth outperformed value, on this slide, our evaluation column is based solely on a growth methodology instead of our usual combination of two methodologies, one being growth and the other being deep value. It's no surprise that three of the top 15 are IT consulting firms. But what I think makes for a way more interesting slide is to see which S&P 500 companies are capital light, high quality, and appear to be undervalued using a growth methodology. Now, that Goldman Sachs study did not say what constitutes a capital light company other than the three formulas they gave. In other words, did the study deem half of the companies to be capital light and the other half to be capital intensive? In other words, if that ranking was zero to 50%, that would be capital light and a 51 to 100% would be capital intensive. I'm not sure as I've not been able to find more details of the study. If any of you can find the details of the study, please let me know. So for this slide, I started with a list of over 4,300 companies, and the first step was to filter out the companies that were capital intensive. I deemed that the capital, excuse me, I deemed that the company had to be in the first three deciles to be capital light. In other words, they had to be in the first 30% of companies when ranked from least capital intensive to most capital intensive. I then filtered out all stocks that are not in the S&P 500. Then I rank them based on a combination of our quality grade over here in this column and their valuation, which is this column. Remember, this is based on a growth methodology, not our usual combination of growth and deep value. And the 15 companies I came up with were pretty cool. I, I like all of these companies. Intuit is first, MSCI, Adobe, Chipotle, General Dynamics, Pepsi, Agilent, Allegiant, FactSet, Motorola, Visa, Synopsys, Cisco, NVIDIA, and Resbit. I think all of our portfolios are currently invested in all of them except for maybe Chipotle, General Dynamics, and Cisco. But I've noticed that Cisco, remember we buy the top 10 for our dividend videos, we buy the top 10 of the 15. I think Cisco has been ranked anywhere from like 11 to 15. So I don't believe Cisco is in our dividend portfolios yet. 
Anyway, let me know if you find this to be interesting. I sure do. And I've tracked them for a couple of weeks, and so far they're outperforming the S&P 500. I mean, of course, that's a super, super short sample size. So anyway, in the comments, let me know if you have any questions, and also let me know what portfolios or investment strategies, or which of the other portfolios, you would like to see more information about. Finally, here are the places you can reach me, YouTube, obviously, as well as our website, beatthestockmarket.com, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I'll see you again next weekend with a list of the top dividend stocks we will have purchased on Monday. See ya.